Welcome to another video my friends. My name is Bijan T and in this video we're going to be going over a trade that I did in which I made about $2,750 overnight with less than $3,500 invested while I'm out on vacation. That's also like the explanation for the different background and everything. I'll, I'll show you guys the little scene. You guys know me. I'm all about views. I don't know if you guys can really see it or not. You know, peep the scene, peep the scene, little trail. Alright. So anyways, that's that. So, this trade, I got into it yesterday. I held it overnight and woke up to a total of a $2,900 profit. So, let's just break everything down and jump into it here. Alrighty, so we were trading Baba, as you guys can see here. Now, before you know anybody gets all bent out of shape or anything like that, you can see it says a $2,375 profit on the day here. Now, the reason it says that is because I got into the trade yesterday and I had about a three, four hundred dollar profit on the day yesterday. So in total, the trade today only increased by two thousand three hundred and seventy five. But I had already been in a profit of about three, four hundred dollars yesterday when the market had closed and I held it overnight. So that's the explanation there before anyone gets bent out of sh shape saying like, wait a minute, you know, why does it say this or why does it say that? Why are you saying two thousand seven hundred and fifty? when it says 2375 that's why so anyways i was trading baba it was puts puts means you make money when the stock goes down now i got in yesterday morning i had 10 contracts i had a next week expiration date so i was willing to hold this a little bit i knew i would be i, I for sure knew for the move that i wanted to get from it i knew i had to hold it overnight i was even willing to hold it until Tomorrow morning, I was going to take, obviously, you know, if, if it worked out per my plan. You get what I'm trying to say? I was willing to hold it until tomorrow morning even. Uh, but, I mean, the whole thing worked out today, so I didn't want to get greedy. So I just locked in my profit, and that's pretty much what happened there. So, I mean, it wasn't necessarily, like, exactly overnight. Technically, you know, it was from yesterday to today overnight to me whenever I say things like oh I just I got into the trade yesterday and held it overnight to me I usually say like yeah I got in within like the last two hours of the market um, but regardless it's still an overnight trade it's still a swing trade so this video is obviously going to serve a few purposes it just goes to show that you know let's say you have a full-time job or you don't have the time or you don't even want to just be there every single morning or every single day you don't have to you get what I'm saying? You can swing trade. There's tons of different things that you can do with the market if you have the knowledge of what to do. So that's pretty much that. As long as you have a plan, really, you can do anything in life. As long as you have a risk management plan. I mean, that's what I look at everything in life. Anything I do is like, all right, what's the risk? What can I lose? Anything I buy. But anyways, before I get all sidetracked with that, let me just wrap up this trade here for you guys. So got in at 7.23, and I literally closed the trade out. I mean, I waited like 55, 58 seconds before I... Uh, place my closing uh, order and all that, but I pretty much closed it right out in the open, 6.30. Uh, and again, I don't want anyone to get all complaining saying, wait, the market opens 9.30. I'm on the Pacific time zone, so I'm three hours behind. So 9.30 is the time market open, opens Eastern time. 6.30 is what time it is for me. So I had 10 contracts. In case anyone's new to options and doesn't understand how options works, one is equivalent to 100. So if it says that the price was 345 here, it's actually 345 here. So I had 10. 10 times 345 is 3,450. So basically, this trade required less than 3,500. So if you had $3,500 and you had the knowledge of what to do, you too could have basically made a $2,750 profit overnight. And I know a lot of people do have that kind of money. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I know there's a lot of people that struggle with saving and all that, but if you really put it into perspective, I'm sure, you know, with a little bit of time, go work a few jobs. I mean, I'm not trying to degrade the value of the dollar, but think about it. $3,500 really isn't that crazy amount of a money, uh, amount of money, especially for the, the stereotypical ideas that go around the stock market that, oh, you need a ton of money or, you know, you guys get my point. My point. You need a ton of money to trade stocks. It's not true. Look at $3,450 made, $2,750 overnight. So anyways, that's pretty much that. And then I closed the trade out the next morning. Like I said, 10 contracts. I closed them all out for 620. So 620 each times 10 is 
6,200, subtract the cost of the trade, the trade cost 3,450, and that's basically how you get the $2,750 profit. Like I said, I had a little bit of a profit yesterday before the market closed. Let me get rid of all these lines here, actually. Just make the drawing set look nice and clean for you guys here. So, I had gotten into it yesterday, right around this area, let's say. So, at, I had puts. Puts means you make money when the stock goes down. So, as the value of the stock was decreasing, the value of my puts was increasing. So, like I said, I had about a $400 profit yesterday, held it overnight still, and then it opened up down here. Now, let me just finish up this idea here, and then I'll jump back to finishing up the chart. So, like I said, 6200 is what we sold it for. Subtract the cost of the trade, 3450 That's where you get the $2,750 profit there and again just to kind of reiterate I know I say this in some of my other videos but because some people have a misconception or a misunderstanding that they say oh yeah when you get into this trade you're losing all that money you're risking all that money options are risky blah 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 blah, blah. it's gonna expire well first of all I don't let this stuff expire on me we don't trade options the way they're intended to be trading the way I trade them and the way I teach my students to trade them is different we use them simply as just a tool to trade the stock instead of trading the actual stock shares we know how to use the options. We know when to get into them to where we don't get hit with any expiration issues or like really any time decay issues. So that allows us to basically kind of like a form of leverage. It's just the most people, the way they use leverage is they go borrow money to be able to trade these, you know, large expensive price stocks. Baba, for example, it's $150, $160 stock. That would take a lot of money if you were trading the shares, but if you were trading the options, as you can see here, you know, it's a lot simpler. So think of it this way. It's like you buying a used car. You bought the used car for 3450 and then the next day you were able to sell it for $6,200. So think of it like that idea. You buy the used car for $3,450. I mean, if you're wrong about it, I mean, even if like, you know, that something's wrong with the engine of the car you're still going to be able to get some money out of it. It's not like, oh, wow, well, all, the whole thing is gone now. You know what I mean? Uh, so just wanted to put that idea out there. Now, to kind of break it down on the chart side of things and make it real simple for you guys, a very basic explanation. I got into the stock right here, which is right around the 160 area. We were trading puts. Puts means you make money when the value of the stock goes down. So as the value of the stock went down, the value of my puts increased. And I got out of the trade at the 155 here. So basically the stock made a $5 movement. So if I wanted to make a 2000, let's just say even a $2,500 profit on the value of the stock moving $5, if I was trading the shares, I would have needed $80,000 minimum invested in the trade to make 2,500. Instead, I invested 3,450 and made 2,750. You see what I'm saying? That's the power of options. That's the power of knowledge. That's why I say, you know, knowledge is power, literally right there. If you know what you're doing, you have the power to do different things. So that's that. Now let me go and zoom in a little bit more here for you guys on the chart. Drag that guy all the way down there. Alrighty, so I got into the trade 723 which is right there. That's where I got into the trade. I had been watching, this, it's actually one of the strategies, well, of course, one, it's one of the strategies I teach in my course, but besides that, it's actually like one of the strategies that I kind of teach in um, my free webinar that I did not too long ago. Maybe I'll do another free webinar for you guys coming up in the future, we'll see. Uh, we'll, we'll see if I can put something together, no promises, but it's like the, if you did attend the free webinar, it's like the basketball strategy. That was one of the things. Now, the way I trade is I don't trade with just one thing. I don't say, oh, well, you know, this happened today. Now we got to go do that. No, no, no. It's multiple strategies. That's the way I trade. So that was just one of the things was like the basketball idea. But essentially, I had been watching this 160 area for a while now. I had actually been trying to get a playoff of him for the last few days, but I just kept missing it, kept missing it. So I finally was able to nail it in on this one. Um, let me zoom back in I should really just make a setting for this for a two-day thing okay so like I said right here is where we got in he got below the 160 and I you know I wanted to wait for him to get a little bit of a pop higher back closer to the 160 area for me to get my entry 
and this is right where I got in pretty much. Right here is we were approaching the 160 area again. I got puts. Of course, I had a plan. I said if we go above a certain area, I'll get out for a loss. I had a, a profit target as well. So I got in there 160. We closed at about 158.60 area, 158.50. So he had already gone down about $1.50. And like I said, I had about a $400 profit already. I held it overnight because I had two profit targets. Basically, my idea with this trade was I wanted to take half of my profit, basically sell half of the, sh the contracts once we hit the 157, 157.50 area, which we never did. We never went below the 158. So that's why I held it overnight because it never hit my profit target. It never hit my, my risk target either, my loss target either, but that's my point. So I was going to take half off there and then I wanted to hold the other half to see if we could get to 155. And that's where I basically said that I was willing to hold it until Friday morning if I needed to. But I mean, you know, it, it literally happened overnight. So what am I going to do? Get greedy? My plan was to get out at 155. So that's the thing that you have to have a risk management strategy. Not only risk management, but you also have to have like greed management if you think about it. You have a plan, you stick to the plan. Don't start saying, oh, well, you know, we're making this profit. We hit this level. Let's see if we can get more. No, just stick to your plan. That's your strategy. You get what I'm trying to say? So that's exactly what I did. We hit the 155. So I, I, I closed out all of the trade. I didn't even want to close out half of it because I knew... Again, a few other strategies of my own kind of kicked in saying, all right, we might even be going up today. Uh, but you, you guys get my point. So anyways, long story short, I closed it out right at the open, which is, I mean, if you want to zoom in specifically, it's like right here. If you know how to read candles and you understand how to read candles, like I said, I closed it out at the very end of the 30, so right near the 31. So you can tell I, I closed it out right around this area. Again, if you don't know how to read candles, then don't worry about it. It's not like that big of a difference. You should definitely learn, but, you know, obviously, you know, I'm not going to go on one of my rants now. So here's where I got in. Here's where I got out. And like I said, if you were trading shares to, to get even just a $2,500 profit, you would have needed $80,000 minimum. Minimum. That's minimum. So... The power of options as well, like I said, the power of knowledge. So anyways, guys, before I go on and start rambling and all that nonsense, you guys know me. I'm going to wrap it up here. Uh, let's see. What what can I have you guys say? I'll see if, if you guys want to get a little, a little what you would call it, a, another webinar, if you will. It'll probably talk about the same things that I did in the last one. Then go ahead and comment down, low, down below saying, you know, I'd love to see another webinar. Just something general like that, just so I can get a little feedback from you guys. So... That's pretty much, guys. Hopefully, pretty much it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. You know the deal. Just hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure you're following me on social media. Who's Bijan T? And if you guys want to learn how to trade or you know sign up for our watch list or join our chat room, I'll go ahead and put the link in that in in the description below. Man, I can't even talk anymore. It's because this beautiful view is distracting me. You know what I'm saying, guys? All right, I'm just messing around. All right, so we'll wrap it up here, my friends. Make sure you guys subscribe, follow me on social media, visit the website, and I will talk to you guys soon.